Hi, this is Shring Siddharth once again. Welcome to the next video of this module, Iterators, of the course of Java Basics and Fundamentals. In this video, we are simply going to explore the for loop in detail. So first of all, let's check out the syntax of for loop. So here on the right hand side, I will show you the syntax and on the left hand side, I will show you the code snippet. So the syntax of for loop is as such. For followed by space as per the coding convention followed by the bracket open and here at the end I have bracket close. Now in between I have three parameters or you can say the three arguments and these values are actually separated with the help of semicolon. So these two semicolons are compulsory for any for loop. And now here I have the first one as initialize, second one as condition and the third one as increment or decrement of the counter. And inside the body of the for loop, we are simply going to put our code here. Whatever operation that we want to perform, we have to perform it inside the for loop. So let's check the code snippet on the left hand side. So here we have int i equal to zero. Now this is the part inside the for loop where we actually initialize our variable or you can say the counter variable int i equal to zero. And now at the center followed by the semicolon we have the condition. So this is the condition. So i is smaller than four returns either true or false. So you can say here we have to put a boolean value. If i is smaller than four then only execute the code present here. And now here on the right hand side we have increment or decrement value such as i plus plus, i equal to i plus 2, i equal to i plus 4 and so on. You can increment the counter i by any times. It is totally up to your wish. And now inside the body of the for loop we are simply going to put our code here. So currently let's make our code simple. Let us simply print the value of hello, hello string. So when this code is executed, in the output console, we get three times hello printed in front of you, like this. Now what exactly is happening and how the for loop works? So in order to print the hello three times, we have to make this for loop to execute the code of print ln hello three times, right? So here on the left hand side, we have to iterate the loop three times, loop one, loop two and loop three. And after loop 3, the program should end, right? So I guess no doubt till here. Now let us explore what happens when this for loop is executed. So as soon as the code runs, the first thing that happens here is the initialization of the counter variable. So here initially I have made int i equal to 0. And now always remember inside the for loop, this counter variable is only executed once and once we have simply initialized the counter then the control comes in the condition part. So there is a condition check. When the condition becomes true then the control enters into the for loop body. So here we are simply going to print hello. So here we get hello as the output right in front of you. And now after the code that is this statement has been executed then the control appears here i++. So now previously i was 0. Now the i becomes 1. So 1 is smaller than 4 again becomes true. And the control again enters into the for loop body to execute this statement. And then the cycle goes on like this. So let us check out what happens in case of loop 1. So here at the top I have initialize condition check, code execution and then increment. This is the sequence that we are going to follow for the for loop, right? So inside the first loop, we are initially going to initialize our counter variable that is int i equal to zero that is present here at this part int i equal to zero. And then after that we are going to check for the condition. So let's come to this part. Zero is smaller than four it is equal to true, right? So the condition check is now true. And now after that, let us print hello. That is the execution of this statement. 
And now finally, at the end of loop 1, we are going to increment the counter by 1, that is i++. Now this part is actually present here at the extreme right of the for loop. So here at the end, i was earlier 0 and it is now 1. So at the end of loop 1, we get the output as hello, this one. And the termination of loop 1 marks the beginning of the loop 2. So inside the loop 2, we will have int i equal to 1. So this value of 1 appears inside the loop 2 as well. So 1 is smaller than 4, again the condition is true. So again print the value and then again increment the counter by 1. So at the end of loop 2, the i becomes 2. And the value of i equal to 2 appears at the beginning of loop 3. So this 2 is now present here. So 2 is smaller than 4, again the condition is true. And I guess I have done some mistake, this should be 3, 3 and 3. Because we are printing hello 3 times right in front of you. So let's make it 3. So here make a note, earlier it was 4 and now I have changed it to 3. It was a silly mistake done by me. So here at the end of loop 2, we have i equal to 2. And this value of 2 comes right here, 2. So while checking the condition, 2 is smaller than 3, which is again true. So again we are going to print hello in the output console and then increment the counter by 1. So at the end, i becomes 3. So now at the end of loop 3, what happens is that it marks the beginning of the loop 4. So here the i becomes 3. So when the condition is checked for the last loop, that is the fourth loop, the condition becomes false. So what happens is that the loop terminates. So we no longer get print hello in the output console. And now one thing to note here is that you can check when the condition is true, then only we are executing the code here as well, here as well. And as soon as the condition becomes false, the loop terminates. And at the end, please note one more thing. In case of for loop, we just initialize the counter once in the very beginning of loop 1. And if you notice, in case of loop 2 and loop 3, we no longer initialize the counter variable. It is blank here. And after that, the control never comes here. It just circulates between the condition, code and increment operator. Increment, check the condition and then execute the code. Increment, check the condition and so on. It simply loops like this. And now, here inside the IntelliJ IDE, let us write a simple program to print all the even numbers from 0 to 20 using the for loop. Let us write our code by using the for statement. For followed by space and then bracket open and bracket close. Now inside this, we have to at least give two semicolons. And now in the extreme left, we have to first initialize our counter variable. So int i equal to 0. Now this is the integer variable i. So if you want, you can make it c, int c, int j, int k and so on. So here I will simply keep it int i equal to 0. Now at the center, it simply requires a condition that has to be true for our code to be executed. Now as a condition, I will simply write i smaller than equal to 20 because we want to print the even numbers from 0 to 20. And now in the extreme right, we just need to increment the counter by 1. Now to increment the counter by 1, we can also use i equal to i plus 1 or if you remember from the assignment operator tutorial, we can simply write it as i plus equal to 1 or we can simply write i plus plus for the sake of simplicity. And now inside the for loop, we just need to write our code. Such as to check a number, if it is an even number or not, we just need to write the if clause. If i modulus 2 is equal to equal to 0, then we can say that the number that we have in the form of counter is actually a even number, right? So s out, simply print the value of i. So here this condition simply checks that if a number is divisible by 2, 
then the number is even. So now let us run our code. So here in the output console we have simply printed 0, 2, 4, 6 and so on till 20. Now let us explore more in case of for loop. So here as I already told you that you can simply change the counter variable name as per your wish. Now let us try something different. Here in the output we are printing the even numbers in the ascending order, right? So if I tell you to print all the even numbers till 20 in the descending order then what you should do? So for that what I will do is that I will simply make the counter as starting from 20. Fine. And now let us reverse the condition as well. So here I will simply make it i is greater than equal to let's say 0. And instead of incrementing the counter I will simply use i minus minus. And now our code will now work fine. Let us run our code. So here we go. We have successfully printed the even numbers in the descending order 20, 18 till 0. So what we have exactly done here? So we have simply started the counter from 20 and then printed our first even number and then decremented the counter by 1. So here the i becomes 19. 19 is greater than equal to 0. It is true. So again our code will be executed. But 19 is not the even number. So we are not going to print this value. So that is why if you notice inside the console we are getting only 10 to 11 output. But we are actually iterating inside the for loop for about 20 times. But we are printing only 10 to 11 values. So this was all about the for loop in Java. Hope the concept is now totally clear. So see you guys in the next video. This is again Shrakes from SmartHerd signing off. And please do subscribe, like and comment on the video. And do share the video if you can. Thank you and have a good day.